think that... I don't know why all of a sudden it seems to be like some kind of wireless connection issue. Alright, well, I can't seem to fix it, so we'll just hopefully continue and it'll be okay. Fortunate is it to be born into human life. Now we are living it. Rare is it, now we hear it. If we do not seek the truth of the Dharma in this life, in what life shall we find it? Let us reverently take refuge in the three treasures of the truth. I take refuge in Buddha. May we all together absorb into ourselves the principle of the way to enlightenment and awaken within us our highest aspiration. May we all together be submerged in the depth of the Dharma and gain wisdom as deep as the ocean. I take refuge in Sangha, units in true accord, in a life of harmony, in a spirit of universal brotherhood, freed from the bondage of selfishness. Period of Kalpas, hard is it to hear such an excellent, profound, and wonderful teaching. Now we are able to hear and receive it. Let us thoroughly understand the true meaning of the Takata's teaching. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Uh, we'll now continue with the chanting of Jusei Ge. Oh. 
I will uh, now recite the golden chain. Golden chain. I am a link in Amida's golden chain of love that stretches around the world. I will keep my link bright and strong. I will be kind and gentle to every living thing and protect all who are weaker than myself. I will think pure and beautiful thoughts and do pure and beautiful deeds. May every link in Amida's golden chain of love be bright and strong. May we all attain perfect peace. Namu Amida Butsu. 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 Namu Amida I'm sorry if uh, it seems to be a little kind of choppy or keeps pausing. I'm not sure what it looks like, but I keep getting this notification that says that there's like a weak connection, which is weird because I've been doing this for like, what, three, four months or something, and I've never had a problem. So it's strange that it decided to like start now. So I hope it's okay. Uh, let's see, for our musical offering, I have, which, um, I actually haven't practiced recently, but oh, when I was practicing uh, ukulele with the ladies at the temple, uh, we did learn this song. So if you wanted to go run and get your, your ukulele and you wanted to play along, that would be fantastic. <laughs> so I'll give you a little bit of time. to my Stream waters. This land was made for you and the 
sun came shining And I was strolling And the wheat fields waving And the dust clouds rolling The voice was chanting Dang, this land was made for you and me Two more verses This land is your land This land is my land From California To the New York Island From the Redwood Forest To the Gold this land was made for you and me As I went walking I saw a sign there A sign of time It said no trespassing But it didn't say nothing That sign was made for you and me This land is your land This land is my land To the New York Island From the Redwood Forest to the Goldstream waters, this land was made for you and me. In the squares of the city, in the shadow of the steeple office, I seen my people as they stood hungry. I stood there asking. Okay, so we'll go into uh, the Dharma talk. Again, sorry if there's like some kind of troubles or something. I know with like music, uh, hopefully it's coming through okay. But today I wanted to pick that song about how the land was for uh, everybody because I wanted to talk a little bit uh, about the systemic problems that we have. So. The past uh, couple weeks, I've been trying to uh, talk about how we have implicit bias, how we have uh, these connections in our brain that make us uh, stereotype people because of the different uh, things in society that teach us about how a certain kind of uh, people are supposed to be and so I've been focusing mostly on the individual efforts that we can have and It's very easy to talk about that from a Buddhist standpoint because as Buddhists We are supposed to be reflecting on ourselves and realizing that we're categorizing things and that by categorizing things It will end up causing us and others um, suffering what is more difficult is to perhaps see the bigger society level uh, systemic problems that can be affecting people. As I've mentioned earlier, uh, Buddhism was created by a man who left society uh, to be on his own and so he didn't really have to deal with those systemic problems. It was not that he didn't want or he didn't champion uh, equality or justice for people but rather we just really don't have too much teaching in the way of, of what direction we should go forward. Um, and it's difficult because we don't have any direction, but it's also very freeing in the sense that we can pick any way we want to go. Anyways, uh, I wanted to kind of talk about why it was difficult to explain and hard to maybe understand so that I could make this comparison that would hopefully help uh, people for people to understand a little bit better. So um, I think maybe something that everyone might be familiar with is the board game Monopoly. So I grew up playing Monopoly. I even had this like Monopoly video game that I would play in the car sometimes. But I grew up playing Monopoly and recently I've learned about the, I learned about the history of it and the history has been uh, quite interesting. <laughs> so, uh, Monopoly, it is, let's see, the, the Parker Brothers bought a patent off someone else. And so the original game was actually called The Landlord's Game. And The Landlord's Game was a board game that was patented in 1904 by Elizabeth, and I'm not sure how to say this correctly, it's M-A-G-I-E, -M Magi, 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 I don't know. Either way, uh, this game was created to be a practical demonstration of the system at the time of land grabbing and its usual outcomes and consequences. So put in a, a more specific way, the object of the game was to demonstrate how rents 
enrich property owners and impoverish tenants. Uh, the, the creator actually made two sets of rules, one that was anti-monopolist, so actually the opposite of the name of the game, anti-monopolist set, which everyone was rewarded when the wealth was created, and a monopolist set of rules in which the goal was to create monopolies and crush opponents. So that's kind of the, the version of the game we see today. Uh, she also hoped that when uh, this game was played by children, the game would provoke their natural suspicion of unfairness and that they might carry this awareness into adulthood. So the creator of the game was actually kind of a, a radical. Uh, but um, what happened was the Parker brothers bought the rights to the game and then they kept the um, more kind of, I don't know, the, the opposite side of what she was trying to prove. And that became the game that we all play today. I stopped short of saying the game that we all love because I don't know how many people really love it. I think, you know, some people are good at it and so they enjoy it. But ultimately it ends up, I think, with a lot of hurt feelings. But uh, to, to explain to anybody who has not uh, experienced the kind of conflict that comes from Monopoly, Monopoly is a board game, which uh, it, was, it was the Parker Brothers, but they were bought out by Hasbro. And in the game, players will roll a two, two six-sided dice to move around the game board. Uh, they buy and trade properties and then develop them with houses and hotels. The players collect rent from their opponents with the goal of being to drive them into bankruptcy <laughs> to, try to, to try to get all the other players to have no more money. So everyone starts with money and then with the money you can buy up properties around uh, and then as you buy up the properties then you can build houses and hotels on them and then as the other players, if they land on them, then they get charged. And of course, the more that you charge, or excuse me, the more that you build, the more that you can charge. And then they're really unhappy when you get like the hotels and everything. So you're, you're essentially trying to take the money of everyone else in the game through this process of buying up land and uh, building on it so that you can drive the other people into bankruptcy, which is, you know, kind of a crazy concept when you think about it. But when you hear about the um, background of it, it makes a little more sense of how it was supposed to make people unhappy about how unfair it is. And I, I definitely had my experience with trying to uh, you know, work with unfairness um, because I, would, uh, I grew up and I would play it with, play with my family and I have a little sister. And so when she was very young, you know, she didn't really understand a lot of strategies of games. And so uh, when she would lose, she'd be very unhappy. And not to say that I wouldn't be unhappy if I lost too, uh, but it was uh, very real to me this that the game really pushes this unfairness, that it uh, really showcases how um, un unhappy it could make people, which was the point of it. And now knowing that it's the point of it, it makes sense. Anyway, uh, I wanted to have this example of this game because one, it kind of illustrates this problem that we have as a, a society, that people who, um, who buy up land uh, for the purpose of building on it to create um, places that charge rent, um, it is an issue where, where it's very difficult for some people to get uh, affordable housing. So that is an issue. Um, but the, the bigger issue that I wanted to talk about was how uh, there's an equal, inequality, not just in that sense, but also uh, over uh, the lines of race. So we, we talked a little bit about race. I'm, I'm sure that within um, schools, we have some history of it and how it can be uh, it can be seen throughout history that African-American people, that black people had uh, a very terrible history in America and they're still feeling the consequences of it today. So I won't get too much into that, but rather uh, I wanted to um, kind of illustrate with this game of Monopoly, or at least the concept of the game of Monopoly, how uh, it can be still unfair today. Uh, first, let's go with this um, different example of, all right, sorry, this is kind of confusing, but we'll go with this other example. I think that everyone is familiar with, they probably heard this in a Dharma talk before about how 
if you think about your parents and then your parents' parents and then their parents and then all those people to come to you, right? And you get this like incredible number. Okay, so, so we've heard that before. Uh, but with this game of Monopoly, imagine that your parents played Monopoly. And then whatever happened for them, that's what you were stuck. That's what you had to start the game with. And then going back, if their parents' parents played Monopoly, and then it had to carry. I mean, if you think about yourself and like the games that you've played, if you've ever lost a game of Monopoly and then you had to start over another game of Monopoly, how would you be willing, how would you be able to win? How would you be able to get any further, right? Uh, if you were losing at the game of Monopoly and you started again, it would be so incredibly hard if everyone else uh, started with all these different properties. If everyone already owned a bunch and they could charge uh, incredible rent to you, it would be very hard to start that game. Uh, if you just had one game to the next game in your own lifetime. Imagine that you had to start with less in the game of Monopoly uh, from your parents because they had to start with less because of their parents. Because they had to start because of less because of their parents. And then we begin to see uh, how difficult it can be for them uh, to, to really succeed in this game. And of course, as everyone probably uh, has figured out by now, uh, I'm not talking about Monopoly, but I'm talking about real life and how there are these there are these certain disadvantages that people have because of the history of their family. And it isn't their fault. It isn't anyone's fault that they have, uh, that they were born uh, with these disadvantages. Um, but as a society, as a whole, we can try to work to make it better. Now, as I was talking about the Buddha, um, he didn't have any direction or any kind of instructions for us to go about fixing these kinds of inequalities. Uh, rather, he just pushed us to see the inequalities so that we could then try to uh, work on them within ourselves and then hopefully on the bigger societal issue. So uh, as I've been talking about ourselves um, and what we can do on the internal level over the past couple of weeks, I wanted to, again, bring, uh, conjure up that idea, that image of all of the different parents that we have and their parents' parents, because that's usually illustrated uh, as, or used as an illustration for interconnectedness. And I wanted us to see that we are part of this interconnectedness beyond just ourselves, that there's other people who are suffering, that there's other people, other people that have been suffering for a very long time. And because of that, they're at this very disadvantaged uh, place in life right now. Um, it, it's more than just land or housing. There's a lot of different issues that I could have gone into. Uh, I just wanted to use this one uh, particular analogy and hopefully to get people thinking a little bit about why uh, there are these disadvantages. And then now it's up to us to figure out what it is that we can uh, do about it. Uh, all of us have different causes and conditions, different um, abilities, different resources to help. So one person's solution is not going to be the same as another's. But uh, I think it's important for all of us to recognize the interdependence and then as Buddhists to recognize our responsibility, our moral responsibility to help to bring compassion to all beings. So uh, as we're trying to bring compassion to everyone, if we see that there are people who are suffering more, uh, that have been suffering for longer, that are suffering um, in a way that is very difficult uh, because of the past of the causes, of, causes and conditions, if we try to understand that there are these people uh, that need, uh, that need uh, the kind of support that we can give uh, the most, then it will help to guide us into what kind of difference that we can make. If you could all please join me in Gashou. Namu Amida Utsu. 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 Okay, we'll close with uh, Ondok San. Nyo. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm.
Closing meditation. If you knew what I know about the power of giving, you would not let a single meal pass. If you knew what I know about the power of giving, you would not let a single meal pass without sharing it in some way. Namu Amida Utsu. 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 Namu Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I'm really sorry for how this service kind of has been going. I feel like it's been um, really choppy. And uh, I think it was, I think someone said in the comments that it was because of the wind. So that's, I don't know, maybe I'll have to plan for like windy days or something and try to pre-record it or I don't know. Anyway, I'll try. Uh, thanks again, everyone. Bye.